Welcome to my next modeling project, this MPC 1970 Chevy pickup. I picked this up, I picked up this pickup in a uh, collection last year, well actually this past spring, and it was, it's an original 1970-69 release. You can tell from the stock number on there. Um, I as you can see, it was already painted and assembled. A lot of the kits in this collection were assembled and painted probably by, I, I don't know for sure, but probably by the gentleman when he was a teenager. And he then took many of them apart. Now the paint jobs were not very well done, um, and some of the assembly wasn't very well done. The um, that's why I think it was probably when he was a kid. The uh, paint on this one is crazed the plastic really bad. And um, what I've done here is I've tried stripping and then sanding. Um, but it's, since it's crazing the plastic, I think what I'm going to do is rather than stripping the paint, I'm just going to sand. It's right up here. It's really, really smooth on the top of the cab. Um, I think by leaving the paint in there, it'll help to fill some of the the pits and the crazing of the plastic. So that's where I stand right now. I'm going to start today on stripping the um, chassis and the wheels. These were um, painted with some kind of black paint that um, it peels right off. Uh, it, you can see it's chipped pretty badly already, uh, but it, it just scrapes right off. So that's no good. I'll strip it down and paint it black again. Now, the reason I put the box like that is because my intent with this one is to turn it into a fire truck. And you can see I've already assembled the fire truck body here. And what I want to do is make it into a forest service truck. And so it's going to have a white cab roof and everything else is going to be forest service USFS green and maybe some white railings on here and there but um, that's going to be it and hopefully this will turn out looking really good i hope the one thing that's going to be kind of a an oddball about this being a forest service truck is if you notice this is the high end is it a cheyenne or something like that this has the high end chrome stuff on it uh, this would have had like fake wood down in here is it or is it in this trim piece right there but either way it's a it's a high-end pickup but so be it I'm not gonna try if I want to get really fancy I could try to remove that trim hmm I've done it before on my s10 model it just adds a lot of time to it the um, I'm not sure some of these kits because they've been assembled and then disassembled and then whatever over the years by this um, person. I'm not sure if all the pieces and parts are here. Uh, one of the things he did was he took all the tires out of all of the kits he had and I had, I don't know how many kits he had total, he had a lot more than I saw. Uh, I had about two dozen kits and he took all the tires out of the kits and put them in another box, in a separate box. And so I had to kind of poke around and find tires that would fit. Um, and likewise, the uh, backing for the wheels, um, those were in a box somewhere else. I had to find them. Um, and similarly, the axles were all put in another box. It was like I had to piece and part this together to find everything. If you notice right now, I'm the uh, pickup bed is not here. It's upstairs. Um, I'm probably going to sell that separately on eBay or something. Here's the, the tailgates right here. Um, but since I'm doing this as a forestry truck, the rear bumper, the front bumper, the tailgate, and the uh, pickup bed will not be used. Not necessary. So. You know, there's surplus to my needs. One of the things that was interesting with these kits, some of them were 
cemented very poorly and some were really well cemented together. This one was really difficult to get apart. I had to get the bottom of the uh, pickup bed separated for this and that took a lot of work to get apart. Um, there's the interior bucket. The I don't know why but the steering wheel's broken. Um, that's gonna have to be I gotta get that out and I tried it's that's in there pretty well. So this one seems to be in, uh, glued together really well unlike some of his other kits. So there's where we stand today. I'll update you when I get more done. Well, I found the bed for the pickup truck. Um, as you can see, there was it was well glued. I had some real struggles getting this baby apart. And it was also well glued to the back of the cab. And uh, so this I'm this is surplus. Um, that and the bumper and the tailgate. The tailgate is missing one of its pegs. And of course, yeah, there's the rear bumper. And the front bumper is going to be replaced too. So The next process I am right now is stripping the paint from the chassis. And hopefully I will get that done today and put, be able to put the black paint on the chassis. I just realized as I was looking at this this morning that that has the header exhaust on it. Some place in here is the standard exhaust. Also, one of the things I wanted to do with this truck, since it's supposed to be a forestry truck, I wanted to put forestry type tires on it. And unfortunately, I have lots of spare tires from that collection that I bought. These are the tires, these six that I'm putting down now, are the tires that should go with the kit and uh, as you know as you hope you can notice the tread on these is basically just like summer tire tread these have more of an off-road look to them but unfortunately these are way too wide to work with the dual rear axle that the fire truck uses so that's not going to work and i think they're a different diameter so then i found these right here but I think these are too wide too. I'm, I'll work with them a little bit and see when I get to the chassis assembly process, which will be after I get the chassis painted. That's it for now. So welcome back to this 1970 Chevy pickup, soon to be fire truck. I have kind of put it together here to see how it's going to fit, to see how it looks. The Axles and wheels, tires are in place. I, I gotta get this on the camera. I did get some tires on the back that fit the axles um, and the hubs that have some tread to them anyways. Uh, not as knobbly as I'd like to see, but that's what it is. That's what would fit. And these are just standard, oops. Looks like we got a little bit of glue. There we go. I just super glued them to the axles. And, okay. So that's how it's going to look. The hood isn't on it right now because I just did some sanding on that preparatory to painting it and it's washed sitting over on waiting to get to dry off so I can paint it. I still need to do a lot more sanding to the cab. You can see the cab roof I've sanded and it feels pretty good. I want to try put a coat of primer on the hood to see how that's going to work and how if my sense of it being smooth is really um, smooth enough to put a nice glossy finish on it. I'm still working on the color for this. It's going to be Forest Service Green. I spray painted some green two days ago it's um, rust-oleum safety green and it's a little bit too green uh, I remember the 1970 ish uh, Forest Service green is being kind of a 
faded green. It's definitely a different color than any other person on the planet would buy for their vehicle. You could always tell a Forest Service truck uh, or car. So I sprayed some of the spray paint into a bottle of paint and it uh, has added a little bit of testers white to it to see if I can lighten it up and now what I want to do is to see if that's going to uh, react adversely with the Rust-Oleum paint. So I'm going to I have a mix together right now and um, I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours or so see if it settles out and uh, if it doesn't I'll mix it up and spray and or brush a little bit on and see how it looks. So I'm at the point now where I need to put the engine on the chassis. The chassis is as you can see assembled to the body so I gotta separate them now. Can I? There we go. It's just those tabs that snap into the cab and now I need to slide the body back, the chassis forward. Oh I can't because of this right here. First step first, there we go. Alright. So there we go. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. As you can see, there's quite a mold parting line down there, or a mating line on the hoses. I have already done some work on that, but I don't know if I can do any more with it. So how is this going to attach? I guess like that. Okay. Don't know if you can tell, but here's the exhaust right here. It goes to there. There's nothing here broken away. And there's a piece here that's missing. So I got some fabrication work to do. Before I attach this, I think what I'll do is put the fan assembly and the air cleaner in place. The engine is going to sit so there's two mounting tabs right there that the I guess that's the axle coming out of the back of the transmission mount two and then there's that right there which goes to the oil pan and I hope this poly zap works It appears to be in position. I may end up having to scrape the paint off and glue, use styrene glue to glue that into position. I don't know. I'll give it give it some time to harden up. Welcome back to the 1970 Chevy fire truck. And I just wanted to try something different today. If you notice, usually I have the camera on my left side. Today I've moved it over to the right side. It's a little bit harder to get at for me because I have the my workbench set up against the, the wall on my right side. But we'll try it. Uh, it should be easier for me to work this way. I don't know. See how things work. Anyways, the on the chassis, you notice before I had oh, two holes here. I put in two pieces of styrene tubing uh, evergreen. Um, this is just a straight section. I haven't tried to file them down and see how they are. This piece here I had to do a little bit of bending on. 
and all I did was hold a iron, yeah, soldering iron really close to it and it um, it actually just fell in the right spot. <laughs> That's how it worked out. So what I need to do now is just to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. And I'll just scrape it like this. I uh, should use the round, the rounded edge. Uh, that's an exacto number eleven, a uh, number ten. And there's a little bit of a blob. Once I have this so, so that I like it, I will paint the exhaust um, with testers. What is it called? Flat steel, I think, or flat aluminum steel? I don't know. One of those. I've got two of them. One's called flat steel. And, uh, that's what I'll paint it. Brush paint it. Not bad. That's pretty good. So the chassis is pretty well along. Where I'm at right now, and I just thought I'd bring you up to date on, is... Uh, oops, I'll start with this side. This is a, a deluxe pickup truck. So it has the side moldings here and the side molding above at the uh, belt line. And what I'm going to do, what I decided to do, was to remove both of those body side moldings, which takes some time. And I have spent some time last night on the passenger side. And I removed the top molding. I'm not sure that's going to be perfect. And I won't be sure until I probably get some paint on it. So, later on. So, I just wanted to show you what I do. There's two ways you can do it. You can do it by scraping it down like this. And what I do is I get it down so that it's just about all all of the what do you call it that red original paint is gone so then I know I have it right down to flush and since I'm doing it this way it's kind of hard to get it uniform scraping I'm gonna have to work it the other thing you can do, I could do in this situation, and I did a little bit of this just to try it out, is use a file. So, the same idea. Since this is curving down, I can get the file in there and not damage any. blend it in a little bit more that way. See, now I hit the body. So maybe maybe I'm better to be back with the exacto number 10 blade here. And what I'm going to have to do when I'm all done, what I'll have to do when I'm done, is go around the door edge molding. Oops. And just take my scribe here and dig it a little bit deeper, dig it a little bit deeper, dig a little deeper. And I won't, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing it right now. You can also use an X-Acto blade. I like using that scribe a little bit better. I find with the X-Acto blade, if I, if I'm not careful, I have I can get out of um, the mold casting here, whatever you call it, the door line.
in which case you have a scratch. So that's the technique I'm going to use. What I'll do when I get it down to about where I want it is take my, uh, this is K&S sanding paper and just sand it, sand it, sand it. I think I think this upper line here is pretty well pretty well cleaned up, and um, then what I will use is some of this is a 1500 grit, um, 15 or 18, whatever. That's 1000. This is the 1000, and um, I still memorize what the the green lettering is one color, the blue lettering is another color, color, grit. So this is going to probably need a little bit more here. It looks like. Looks like it's really nicely feathered in here and up on the front of the fender. You can see right there, there's still a little bit of sign of the um, molding. So I need to probably get a little bit more sanding right there. And when I get this all down, then what I'll do is, again, I have issues with the paint crazing the plastic so I'm going to have to sand the whole sides down. I'm not going to bother with the engine compartment. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but I do need to do the body sides. I've done the roof. The back of the cab I think is pretty well smoothed out. Um, the A-pillar on that side I did. And the cowl, the front cowl, I have done some. It's kind of hard. I don't want to get, you don't want to get too much into the details, like the windshield wipers. Besides which, probably the plastic crazing isn't going to show that much in there. But you do want to get, obviously, right in here, where plastic crinkling or crazing will show on the finished model. That's pretty smooth. So I think that's the cowl is pretty well done. So I'm gonna spend probably half an hour, maybe an hour on this side, and then I'll have to do the driver's side. And I still have some more, obviously, some work to do around here with super glue on. Um, I presume that's super glue for the. Uh, mirrors the wing mirrors i have a pair of wing mirrors they're not from this kit and i don't know what i'm going to do um i'll have to look online see if i can find some maybe um, simply because i'm not sure that they'll fit this truck so here we are about half an hour later and there's the passenger side i Use the file in places, use the number 10 exacto blade in places, depending on how I was feeling. Um, in general, the file, you, as you saw me down here, I, you have to be careful with the file. You can get into the meat of the plastic that you want to leave. It looks like there might be a little bit more sanding right there. I think I'll leave it for now and see how it comes out with a, paint, with a coat of paint on it. Uh, maybe some primer or some gray would uh, show how the paint came, I mean, how the sanding has done. I did a little bit more sanding on the glue here and here. Uh, sanding and scraping with this, again, the number 10 X-Acto blade. Very handy thing to have, um, both the number 11 and 10. And I've opened up the door panel lines. Uh, with the scribe and the exacto blade. So passenger side done, sanded down, smoothed off. All that's left on the cab, I'm going to take off the fuel filler cap and uh, scrape down this side. Maybe another day I'll get this. Well, here on. we are back again with the Forest Service fire truck build. The cab, as you can see, has been lost its uh, trim on the sides. And I sanded the red paint down so that I got rid of the, hopefully, the crazing of the plastic. 
if you can see the light shining off there it's pretty pretty shiny I have uh, the hood has been sanded down and then I put some um, yeah acrylic primer on there and then I put some this is a testers primer light gray primer and uh, then I sanded that a little bit too because it was still a little bit pebbly um, what do you call it orange peel of orange peel effect so that looks like the hood is ready and the cab is ready and the body is ready I need to think about how I'm going to paint this uh, but this is going to be green so the first step I'm going to do I think is to put some gray primer on it like this and see if I got this all smoothed out I want to make sure that I've got all the sharp edges between the trim um, pieces that are on there what do you call those those rub strips or whatever that were on there um, you can see I've got a little bit rain remaining right over here that you know that might be okay it feels pretty smooth and you can almost see that there's a bit of a line there oh interesting thing I noticed this back section of the cab and I think on both sides is doesn't really line up with the door and um, well, this one's pretty close but this one drops down about you know a fraction of a micron or something like that very small then um, yeah once that's ready to be painted green then everything's going to get painted green so I'm going to have to line up everything that's not going to be black or white oh I got to paint the cab roof white too because of course it's a US Forest Service truck here's my bottle of green uh, what I did was I sprayed the uh, rust-oleum visibility green into this bottle through the spray nozzle and it splatters all over the place and then I added a dash or two of testers uh, you know, gloss interior tub that's going to be green there's the front bumper that's probably I don't know does that be green or should that be white I don't know and there's a rack where does that go that goes on the front bumper someplace on the front of the bumper this goes on the front bumper somewhere it doesn't line up with those two holes does it um, that should be white probably the dash is going to be green um, hmm. there's some other pieces and parts I wanted to but yeah maybe that should be green too oh I know what I'm thinking of there's various grab irons or grab handles that go on the back here and I think they're in chrome I think they're on the chrome tree here someplace yeah I can see one two hmm There's one two three anyways those are going to be painted white body's going to be green appliances add-on tack-ons they're going to be white grab irons or whatever you want to call them those are going to be white so again before I start spraying paint all over the place I need to think about what colors things are going to be um, 